Som Jane Kui. Please be seated. The court is now in session. The chamber would like to inform the parties and the uh, general public that for uh, today's proceedings and tomorrow, Judge Neil Nunn, who is the presiding judge or the president of the Trital Chamber, is not available for personal matters. Therefore, he cannot attend uh, these two days' uh, proceedings. And after uh, the deliberation by the uh, sitting judges of the trial chamber, I, Yasukan, will be acting as the president during these two days' uh, proceedings until the day the president returns. Uh, this decision is pursuant to 79.5 of the ECCC internal rules, and today the Chamber continues to hear the remaining testimony of witness Hem Horn, and the Chamber begins to hear testimony of a civil party to TCCP through 47. Ms. Sackle-Botte, could you report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings? Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has requested to waive his direct presence in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the graffiti. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, Mr. Hem Horn, is present and ready in the courtroom. The upcoming civil party, after the conclusion of the current Witness, which is to TCCP 247, is present in the waiting room to be called by the chamber. Thank you. <coughs> President, the chamber now decides on the request by Nunjir. The chamber has received a waiver from Nunjir. Dated 24 June 2015, which notes that due to his health, that is back ache and back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long. And in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he has requested to waive his that is present in the 24 June 2015 hearing. He advises that he has been advised by his duty counsel, by his counsel, that the waiver cannot be construed, a waiver to his right to, to be tried fairly or to challenge any evidence presented or admitted at any time during his trial. Having seen the medical report of Nunji by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 24 June 2015, who notes that Nunji has a chronic back pain and cannot sit there for long, and recommends that Nunji shall be granted to attend the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 for the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via an audiovisual means. The AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunji can follow it remotely. That applies.
for the whole day. Cette mesure est valable toute la journée. The chamber now hands the floor to the defense teams and you have uh, two sessions to put questions to the witness. First, the floor is given to the defense team for Nunchi and Council Copper. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, good morning, Your Honors. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, I have a few questions um, to put to you uh, today. First, I would like to speak um, to you about your positions within uh, Division 310. Um, I've noted that you and you gave testimony yesterday have been a secretary uh, in charge of making um, biographies, profiles. Um, I also noted uh, in your DC CAM statement that you have been a commander uh, within Division 310 and uh, also that you have been a staff officer for the regiment. Did I adequately summarize your positions, your ranks uh, within Division 310? Yes, that is about right. However, I did not have any uh, leading role in Regiment 12. Um, and the time that you were a commander, did you then have a leading role? Were you then in charge of combatants? On the supervision of soldiers in Regiment 12, I did not have that authority. However, I acted as a spokesperson for the commander in relay information or instructions to the soldiers in the regiment. Um, would it be correct if I say that because of this function um, you had a good oversight of um, activities within Division 310? Uh, orders which were given. Did you have a good overview of um, Division 310? Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. statement is correct. However, however, allow me to emphasize again that I did not have an overall authority to supervise or to give instructions to soldiers in that regiment. Um, I understand. Um, given your position, were you also able to um, understand or grasp what um, other divisions uh, were doing, for instance, Division 450 or Division 920. Were you able to observe um, what these divisions uh, were doing in 75, 76? Division en do you know if there was any relation between Division 310 and Division 450?
No, I did not. Did you ever hear of the Vision 920-920? Question, avez-vous jamais entendu parler de la division 920-920? At school day. Je ne la connais no, pas, répondez-moi. No, I did not. Uh, yesterday you gave testimony that um, in November 1975 um, the party center's uh, military was established um, and that the soldiers um, from zones were handed over to the general staff. Um, did I summarize that adequately? But Trump Trohan. Yes. Um, are you able to tell um, how many soldiers of the various divisions were handed over to the center and how many forces uh, stayed back in the various zones? Um, do you know anything about that? No, I did not have uh, that knowledge. Réponse, non, je ne savais rien de cela. I uh, do not know for each zone how many people were involved in the general staff uh, activity. Prenez part aux activités de l'état-major pour chacune des zones. Are you in a position to give a to give an a, approximate figure, an estimate uh, as to how many forces coming from the zones uh, were integrated into the central uh, army? My observation, the the figure only appeared on paper, but I don't think every soldier existed to correspond to the figure on paper. So I do not know at all how many soldiers or divisions were in each zone. I understand. Um, you said to the interviewer of DC Chem, uh, and I think you repeated that in your testimony that uh, you and your unit uh, were considered uh, traitorous, but that you did not know anything about the traitorous activity that you were accused of. Um, is that indeed your testimony? Yes, I stand by my statement to tell you the truth. I did not know about the treacherous activity, nor did I have any thought about that. Um, yesterday and the day before yesterday, uh, Mr. Witness, we uh, heard the testimony of um, another soldier within Division 310, and uh, he gave quite detailed testimony as to the plans uh, of Division Commander uh, Un. He gave testimony about a diversion of weapons, uh, weapons to be used for a plot to attack Washington Airport, uh, to attack uh, Radio Phnom Penh, uh, all this in order to, um, to, to come to a coup d'état led by Khoi Thun uh, in early 1977. When I say this to you, does that somehow refresh your memory about Un's plans? Quant au plan de Un.
uh, did not know about uh, 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 did not receive any plan in uh, uh, regarding that activity uh, I understand but have you not heard about these um, plans for uprising or rebellion coup d'état whatever you would like to call it coup d'état quel que soit le nom que vous souhaitez utiliser Only after I was assigned to work at the Kampong Chenang airfield, Réponse I heard about the, the uprising, but I personally did not observe any activity as such. I only heard about it. And what is it exactly that you heard? I heard that uh, people from the north Réponse, and east zones were accused of uh, being traitors, but I did not know about traître. the alleged activities. Um, there is more testimony than only um, the Division 310 combatant that we heard Donc, in court yesterday. As a matter of fact, there is um, testimony of other 310 combatants, uh, which I would like to read to you, and maybe that will somehow refresh your memory. Um, Mr. President, um, we put these um, DC CAM statements on the interface. Uh, one is 19.201 um, English ERN. By the way, it's uh, also now numbered as E37540. Uh, ERN English 00337712. Khmer 00055077. And French 00364274. Um, this Division 310 cadre testified to DCCAM as follows. Uh, yes, uh, it erupted in 1976, but I cannot recall the month. I have forgotten the month. In late 1976, we were going to erupt, but it was exposed. The two north zone divisions were readied from Wat Phnom northward. The east zone in charge to the south was ready to fight, but it was exposed, and Kun, the chairman of the north zone, was arrested. Um, now let me f read also while I'm confronting you with this the testimony of a second division 310 cadre uh, that is document 19.93 now also known as uh, document e3 slash 7 uh, English ERN 00324168 Khmer 0008 some look me we President, uh, Council, please uh, slow down. I apologize, Mr. President. Uh, Kumar 00087816 and French 00324206. Combatant is asked about UN, and he testifies as follows. At that time, he was linked to the UN, who wanted to uprise in Phnom Penh. Question Did he plan any plot on that? Answer He planned an attack plot. Unfortunately, when that plot was compromised, we were transferred to, the, to farm Paddy for a while. Question can you elaborate Taun's plot? First, he called us for a secret meeting and instructed us that he planned to attack Phnom Penh. He hoped to deliberate 
and take control of Phnom Penh. Question, why did he plot to attack Pol Pot? Answer, he said that society was not good. Question, did Ta'un hold a meeting with his previous forces? Answer, yes, only 100 combatants, including me, were called to attend that meeting. Question, did you join with them? And answer, I took on a full truck of weapons to meet him in Phnom Penh in the preparation to attack Phnom Penh. Unfortunately, the plot was compromised. And then, a bit further down in that same DC Chem interview, which is um, English ERN 0032-4172, and Khmer 000 818 until 89 and French 0032 uh, He, the same cadre, testified as follows. Question, who was superior to Ta'un? Answer, I had no clue. Question, according to that preparation, did you think that his force could defeat Pol Pot? Answer, it was not easy, I guessed. If we could not defeat Pol Pot, we would appeal to Vietnam and called for force at the east under Chakrai to help. Question, that was what Ta'un told you, right? Answer, yes. Question. So it meant that Ta'un's force relied on the force from the east, right? Answer, yes. But Ta'un was in charge of steering up force in Phnom Penh, right? Yes. So did you think these forces could challenge Pol Pot's forces? I thought so because Pol Pot's forces were disarmed and the guns were stored in the warehouse. Um, now, Mr. Witness, um, I read the statements of these two 310 cadres. I summarized um, the testimony of another cadre who testified here in court. Um, does this somehow jog your memory as to uh, what happened with the rebellion and the attack on Pochentong Airport and Radio Phnom Penh? President, uh, witness, please uh, hold on. And the international deputy co-prosecutor, do you have the floor? Merci, Monsieur le Président, et bonjour. Thank you, Mr. President. D'abord, je crois qu'il serait utile pour le témoin de mentionner les noms des personnes qui auraient fait ces déclarations, qui ont fait ces déclarations, ainsi que leurs fonctions exactes. Il ne suffit pas de dire qu'ils étaient des cadres de la division 310. Ça n'aidera pas nécessairement le témoin à se souvenir. Deuxièmement, le témoin était très clair sur le fait qu'il ne connaissait rien de cela. Donc la question qui est formulée en disant « Est-ce que cela vous rafraîchit la mémoire ?» Je ne pense pas que ce soit une question euh, correcte. Il faudrait plutôt lui demander si ça lui dit quoi que ce soit. Mais euh, il n'a jamais évoqué ce genre d'incident, donc il ne semble, euh, semble pas possible que ça lui rafraîchisse la mémoire en tant que tel, puisqu'il était très clair sur ce point. Um, Mr. President, I think I'm entitled to um, ask this question. I first asked an open, an open question, um, and, and then he confirmed saying that he didn't know anything, which the defense believes is um, not necessarily credible. Uh, after that, I confronted him with testimony from two or three other um, combatants. I'm really 
I'm happy to uh, give their names um, and their positions. One of them is, by the way, from Regiment 12. Um, so uh, I think it's a, uh, a proper line of questioning and a proper method what I've uh, uh, done. So I think this question should be allowed. President, Defense Council, President. please uh, mention the name and the rank of the person whose statement you read out, and you can proceed with your questioning. Um, I would be happy to do so, um, but maybe it would be better because there's a um, likeliness that we will ask both uh, cadres to appear as witnesses in the subject uh, of internal purges. Um, so considering this, then um, handing over uh, the Khmer version of the document I think would be uh, more appropriate. Yes, uh, you can do that. Please deliver the uh, Khmer document to the witness. Yes, I will. One, one uh, moment, please, Mr. President. Un instant. Um, we weren't prepared for this question, um, Mr. President, so it will take a, one more moment. Monsieur le Président, il va me falloir un instant encore. President, the Deputy Co-Prosecutor, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Juste en attendant que notre copie trouve les documents, je signale que la première interview est celle d'une personne qui avait 20 ans en 1975 et la seconde d'une personne qui avait 15 ans, si je ne me trompe pas, en 1975. Notre copie a parlé de cadre. Ce sera utile de qu'il nous donne le rang de ces personnes qui étaient si peu âgées à ce moment-là. I don't see the point uh, in doing this. It's, it's, they were cadres, and um, 
I think um, we should just read their names to him or should show the names and that's it. I don't see any point in um, saying what the relevance is now of, of their ages. Blue Mitri, President. So. Council Copper, please uh, mention the age Maître and the rank uh, to the witness, and the witness can read the rest of the document before him. Um, Mr. President, one cadre, the one mentioned in uh, 1993, is member of Regiment um, 12. Um, I'm not sure if he had a rank or whether he was just a combatant. It's on um, page English page uh, ERN 00324180. And his age? We have asked for the age. He was 45 years old when he gave his interview in 2005. This means he was born in 1960, and he was, if it's correct, um, 16 in 1976. And the other cadre is born. Um, in nine. Some chilo chakram. President, you may now proceed, Judge Lavagne. Alors, si well, nous parlons bien if we de, are indeed speaking uh, about qui est uh, the par, person uh, le document 19 involved in document 19.93, is this the person who is concerned? Il y a, semble-t-il, en annexe à son audition, une biographie. biographie Est-ce que c'est bien le 1993 So, are we speaking about document 19.93 here? Is this the person uh, referred to in this document? Yes, indeed. Alors, Maître Coppel, effectivement. Je vois que so dans l'annexe, la biographie annex, qui figure en annexe, in the biography, il est dit in the annex, que cette personne est née en 1955 et euh, qu'il euh, est membre uh, d'un euh, peloton, a, me semble-t-il, member of a, member of the platoon, of a platoon en anglais. Within Regiment 12. Dans le Regiment 12, demande de Maître Coppel. But to be honest, I have I, I, I failed to see the relevance uh, of age. We never speak about age of combatants. Uh, but Maître Copé, Maître Copé, si on vous demande son grade, ceci peut avoir une certaine pertinence parce que ça permet de savoir quel était le niveau de compréhension de la personne qui a fait ces déclarations. President, you may now proceed. International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Merci, ce n'est pas pour interrompre, euh, mais dans l'interface, le document que nous avons, c'est IS 19.193, et pas 19.193, que on parle bien donc de, du même document. Sur euh, so, ce document, il est effectivement dit qu'il qu avait 45 document, ans en 2005, s'il s'agit bien de cette personne. Personne. Yes, 
You know what, I am tired of this. Uh, Mr. President, I will ask the questions differently. Um, forget about what I read to you, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, are you able now to uh, remember uh, the plot uh, to attack Pochentong Airport, Radio Phnom Penh, State of Coup d'Etat um, by Aoun and Koitu? tenu un coup d'état préparé par Aoun et Koitu. Answer. I did not know. Je ne savais pas. Fine. I will move on, uh, Mr. Witness, to um, um, something else that you said. Um, you gave testimony to DC Chem that at one point in time, because of the allegations or accusations of treacherous activities, you changed your name. Vous avez en raison des allégations um, de traîtrise qui pesaient sur vous. Tell us how vous aviez changé votre nom. Pouvez-vous nous dire um, comment vous avez réussi how you were able to change your name changer votre nom uh, after discovery of the plot or the traitorous activities rather um, and subsequently move on under a different name. Et Can you explain to me how that went? Poursuivre sous un autre nom. Pouvez-vous me l'expliquer? Answer. Réponse. Upon my arrival at Kampung Chenang Airfield, biography was collected uh, again at that time, and I changed my name to Riem. I understand that you changed your name, but, but how did you do that? Um, was it possible at the time to just change your name like this and then subsequently no one within the division would know who you were before? Answer. When I arrived at the airfield, I was not in the division. Lorsque je suis arrivé à l'aéroport, and uh, I was there with uh, the remaining soldiers from the, my unit, and uh, we stayed uh, in different places, not together. Et nous ne résidions pas ensemble. Nous étions à des endroits différents. Um, but that doesn't answer my question. Um, Cela ne répond pas à ma question. Had a position within Division 310. We just discussed that. Then you heard about uh, traitorous activities, and you changed your name. Um, you had been fighting within Division 310 for years. How did that? How did you do this? How did you change your name um, in order to uh, be able to hide somehow? Answer. Réponse. After the people, upper people from the southwest zone Après came to that place, they the did not venus, know me at that time. Ils ne me connaissaient pas. And because I could see that the situation changed at that time, I decided to change uh, my name to Riem, and uh, I noticed that uh, the one who uh, was from the southwest zone, who at that place could not read and write, that is why I changed my name. So the new commander of Division 310 Question. was also not able to read and write. Commander of Division 310 was illiterate, also. Maybe. President. Le President. Uh, Mr. Winnet, you have to wait for the microphone to Monsieur go Témoin, on before you speak. Que active votre micro avant de parler. President. Le président. 
Again, uh, Mr. Winnes, uh, please films, give your response témoin. when you notice the light of the microphones de parler on. Lorsque la lumière de votre micro no, Witness, Le when the people from the southwest zone came to supervise Lorsque ceux de la zone 12, sud-ouest I sont venus sur knew at the time the that uh, those people were illiterate. Je savais. Even uh, when I uh, read incorrectly the document, they did not realize si that I made a mistake. That is why I decided to change my name to Riem. And later, I uh, was removed, and I did not know what uh, was going on Plus after tard, that time. On so is it your testimony that the division commander and the regiment commander, the new ones, were not able to read and write, and that's why you um, thought at the time that you could safely uh, change your name? Answer, yeah, yeah, yes, that is correct. Um, very well, Mr. Witness. Um, I'll move on now to Question. your work at um, the airfield, Kampong Chinang. Um, you talked about um, rock breaking, um, and that uh, there were casualties because of the rock breaking at Kampong Chinang airfield. Um, do you remember which forces it were or who it was that um, was or were handling the explosives. Vous souvenez -vous which qui unit était um, was using des explosives to break the rocks? À casser la roche. Answer. Réponse. The forces from the east zone. C'était les gens de la zone est. And how do you know this? Question. Comment le savez-vous? Answer. These forces were divided and uh, they could not stay close to each other. One On a divisé les forces group et les stayed et ne pas to the south of des autres. Un groupe, the airfield and uh, another group au sud du chantier, was staying to the northeast of the airfield. Dans le nord. I noticed that the they were from the east zone because of uh, their accent, and I realized that, that they were from uh, the east zone. Their accent was different from that of different. the north. De ceux du nord. So I was in the central zone or the north zone. Moi, été dans la zone I centrale, was staying la to the nord. north of uh, the area at that time. Et au nord du chantier à I could understand that uh, some uh, units consisted of uh, people from the east zone and some consisted of people from the southwest zone. Do you know um, the reason uh, why the east zone forces were trusted with explosives? Um, why was it um, that the east zones were using explosives to break the rocks? Answer. One who was assigned to blast the rock uh, would die because it was a dangerous work and if uh, he or she could not escape in time after installing the explosive, he or she would die. We understand this. Um, that was not my question, Mr. Witness, but my question was, do you know, do you know why it was that the East Zone forces who were working at Kampong Chinang Airfield were entrusted with explosives? Why was it uh, them trying to break the rocks with explosives? Nikki 
answer. Repose. It was a method of execution, and we could not protest or refuse the assignment. We had to do. C'était une méthode d'exécution, et nous ne pouvions pas protester. I'm not, I'm not sure if I understand. Why was it a method, method of execution? Je ne comprends pas. Que voulez-vous dire par cette méthode d'exécution? Why? I said it was a method of execution because the explosive was used une to car on ces break the rock and the one who was uh, tasked with uh, breaking the rock he used the explosive and uh, he could not uh, escape in time Bien souvent, ne pouvait s'enfuir à temps. He, he or she would uh, be injured Et or die. Était blessé, ou mourait même. I did not witness uh, the casualty or the incident Mais I heard from other about that incident. Uh, Mr. Witness, you Mr. have been a soldier, you have been uh, in combat. Vous avez participé à des combats. I'm sure you know what the purpose of dynamite or explosives is. What can you do with dynamite or explosives? Les explosifs et la dynamite peuvent servir. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire avec de la dynamite? Witness, I have told you already. Réponse. It's, it was not easy to install Je the explosive dit. into the rock. Ce pas facile and uh, they les did not dans la roche. care how many people died at Et that time. Se moquaient du nombre de morts à l'époque. And uh, it was a dangerous uh, work. After the uh, the rock blasted, uh, the rock fragments of wood hit the one who was tasked with uh, that kind of work. He or she would die or got injured. And I understand that this kind of assignment uh, was uh, tasked uh, to people because they wanted uh, them to die. Que avait confié ces tâches à des gens I'm, I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Witness. Ex with explosives, certainly in the hands of soldiers, uh, you can do all kinds of very bad things to other soldiers. Um, again, why was it that the East Zone troops were entrusted with explosives? Uh, wouldn't that be dangerous? Pourquoi t confié des explosifs aux gens de la zone Est? Cela pouvait être dangereux, non? Answer. I would like to clarify once again. Une fois de plus the Southwest Zone uh, people supervise uh, those de la zone who were from the East Zone. No one uh, dared to refuse the assignment uh, imposed by cadres from the Southwest Zone, and as for my unit, I was under the supervision of uh, the Southwest Zone, and aussi sous la supervision it was the de la zone same case for uh, the East Zone, for people Tout from the East Zone. De la zone est. So the Southwest Zone Question. cadres who so had to supervise and watch the East Zone cadres gave the same East Zone cadres uh, explosives, is that what you're saying? On confie aux au cadre de la zone est des explosifs. C'est ce que vous nous dites. Bah, bah. Answer, yes, yes. Réponse. C'est exact. Southwest zone cadres gave uh, the explosives Les cadres de la zone to the east zone cadre in order that uh, the east zone cadre could use them Ces mêmes cadres de la zone est s'en servent pour casser la And as I stated, after the dit, rock was blasted, uh, the fragments of wood hit uh, the one who was cast with that assignment. Um, fine, Mr. Witness, I'll move on. Um, 
you testified also that before you came working at Kampong Chenang Airfield, you were at uh, Ankong Knang, Anong Knang, um, working at the rice paddy fields. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, you gave testimony that you worked there, you and your unit, between 7 and 11. Then had a break for lunch, start working again at 2 o'clock until 5 o'clock. Is that indeed correct? Yes, that is correct. And did I understand your testimony correctly that the working times, the working hours at Kampong Chang Airfield were the same? Also, between 7 and 11, lunch break until 2 and then work until 5? Yes, that is correct. Answer. Working hours in the afternoon uh, was were the same as uh, those in the, the morning, and uh, we had to do extra work. Um, you also testified that um, Question. you and your unit were different or differently treated vous from other soldiers, and that you were considered useless and others were treated normally. Um, can you give me an example, can you give the trial chairman an example of this difference between your unit on the one hand and soldiers who were treated normally on the other hand? Answer. Regarding my unit, it was named Unit 17. Members of my unit were strictly selected. And we had to stay in the location that we were asked to stay. We worked eight hours during the daytime, and at night time we had to spend four more hours working, regardless of rain. Nous étions traités différemment. Nous travaillions huit heures par jour, et nous devions travailler la nuit, même si plus. Donnez-moi un exemple de différence dans le traitement. Question. Pouvez-vous nous donner un autre exemple? Regarding your unit, traitement différent entre vos unités et les autres qui vous avez dit étaient traités normalement. Question. 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 Answer. Unit 17 was categorized as the unit which was linked to the treacherous network. And if members of Unit 7 could be refashioned themselves, they could survive. If not, they would die. I understand, Mr. Witness, but Question. what I'm asking you is, Je do you give me one example Et in terms of working hours, food ration, de travail, de uh, hygiene, de uh, sleeping facilities, one example Là où vous dormiez, that would illustrate me donner the difference in treatment of your unit and the units uh, whom, of whom you said um, vous étiez they were treated normally? Était traité normalement, selon vos dires. Answer. Regarding my unit, my unit had no resting time. Nous as for other pas de temps units, de repos dans mon unité. They had a short break between Alors, les autres unités. Seven and nine, and another break between nine and eleven. And as for my unit, I told the court already we could only rest after eleven o'clock, and we resumed work 
at 2 in the afternoon. We continued from 2 until 5 p.m., after which we could take another short break. For sleeping times, we did not have enough sleep. We did not have mosquito nets or sleeping mats. And as I stated, I uh, started a work at 9 uh, in the morning until 5, uh, 5 p.m. And I had two sets of clothes. And in the evening, I had to clean the one set of clothes. And uh, the other day, I could use it to wear. I had no free time. But, but did your commander, at one point in time, while you were at Camp Kampongchang Airfield, uh, tell you and your fellow uh, unit members, uh, you have to work one hour longer or two hour longer, longer uh, than all the other units here? Was there an, an instruction or an order? Was there an explanation? Um, can you be a little more specific? Winners, when the, we were needed to work at night, for example, they wanted us to work uh, at night on the, the 20th. We would be told by them that we had to work from a certain time until certain time. And we, when we were told that we understood that uh, we had to work at nine at night. And if uh, we had assignment to do at night, uh, we did not go back to our sleeping quarter. We had to stay at our work site after 5 p.m. And after uh, a short break, we would resume work at night. There was a rotation system applied for other units, but regarding my unit, uh, this was not applied. Um, I'll move on because I don't have any more time. Um, I would like to ask you some other questions. Um, you said that at Camp Chinang Airfield, you were no longer considered a soldier um, or a military combatant, but a laborer. Um, do you know whether members of Division 310 who were also working at Camp Chinang Airfield um, were instructed were ordered to go to the battlefield in October 77 to fight with uh, Vietnam. D'autres membres du régiment de, euh, de votre unité plutôt qui étaient à Camp Chenang ont été envoyés en octobre 77 sur le champ de bataille. Réponse. As for units which were assigned to work at the airfield they did not uh, participate in the battlefield against the Vietnam. I knew only what happened in my own unit. I did not know about other business. Uh, let me give you one example. Um, a former division, or a former commander, excuse me, of um, um, the handicapped unit, K4, within Division 310, um, testified that about half of his unit uh, volunteered to go to fight the Vietnamese at the border. Uh, does that somehow jog your memory? Answer. I have no knowledge about that. When I was at the airfield, I knew nothing else besides my work. Moi, I did not know who received the order to participate, to participate in the battlefield. I was there and worked. I was uh, 
to be ready and go to work Moi, je most of the time. Prêt à aller travailler. So is it your testimony Question. that you do not know anybody within Division 310 um, who went de from Kampong Chang Airfield de uh, to the border with Vietnam, à la frontière, uh, avec uh, le Vietnam to fight there? Pour, uh, y combattre? Answer yes, yes, that is correct. Réponse, oui, c'est exact. Um, one last question. Um, Mr. Witness, you testified Dernière yesterday, question, but only very shortly, about the presence of Chinese engineers. Um, can you tell us um, how many you saw in the beginning? When you arrived there and at the end of your stay at Kampong Chang Airfield. Du chantier de Kampong Chang. Answer. My apology, I could not give you the exact number of Chinese engineers, but I could say there were many Chinese engineers everywhere. We could see them everywhere, even in the blasting units. And uh, the units which were responsible for compacting soil or clearing land consisted of uh, Chinese engineers. So Chinese engineers worked in the unit that used explosives to break the rocks? Did I understand that correctly? Answer. I did not know, but uh, regarding Je ne savais pas. the location of which I worked, I could see there were Mais Chinese là où je every time. Il y avait des Are you able to give, an, give us an estimate Question. as to how many Chinese engineers you saw at the beginning and how many you saw at the end of your stay at Kampong Chang Airfield? Not exact numbers, but but an, an estimate. Séjour à l'aéroport de Kampong Chang. Une estimation. Answer. Réponse. Workforce at uh, the airfield <coughs> was in large uh, numbers. Il y avait beaucoup de gens à and as I stated, there were Chinese et engineers dis, everywhere ingénieurs supervising the work. And I'm travail. sorry, I could not uh, give you the regrette, exact estimate how many of them were there. Fine, and um, that's, that's all right, Mr. Witness. Um, but is it fair to say that um, if accidents happened with explosives or if people fell because of exhaustion um, or whatever happened, the Chinese engineers or the Chinese advisors uh, were in a position to witness all of this? Regarding the blasting of the rock, uh, the Chinese technicians were not uh, close by. There were only Cambodian laborers who were present, and the Chinese technicians only gave instructions to the uh, Cambodian laborers and they never stay close to the where the uh, rock blast the were to uh, happen. They were at a far distance and the explosive uh, was mounted by uh, Cambodian laborers. And uh, there were injuries ranging from serious injuries to death. And everybody heard about uh, these kinds of uh, work related accidents at the rock blasting site. I understand, and that concludes my uh, questioning. You never actually witnessed this yourself, is that correct? 
pour conclure euh, mon interrogatoire, vous n'avez jamais été témoin de ces incidents, est-ce exact Yes, that is correct. Réponse, oui, c'est exact. Thank you, Mr. President. Maître Coppa, merci, Monsieur le Président. President Tchatchlavagne, you may proceed. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Mettre Copé pour les Thank nécessités you, de la transcription. Council je Copé vous ai demandé de nous préciser si ce matin vous entendiez vous référer au document 19.93 ou 19.193. Il est possible qu'il y ait eu un problème de traduction, mais dans euh, quel cas il serait possible de possible corriger. Um, no, uh, Judge Levine, I have no intention anymore to use this document. Maître Coppe, je n'ai plus l'intention d'utiliser ce document, Monsieur le Juge. Somakon Lok Mitri. President, uh, thank you, Le Defense Pinit. Council. It is now appropriate for a short break. Uh, the Chamber will take a break now and uh, resume at 10.30. The court is now in recess. Some Jane Crouching.